Elie Wiesel was a Holocaust survivor. He never stopped sharing his story. In this speech he gave in 1999 in front of President Clinton and his wife Hillary Clinton was when they were going over past events of the last century and he was wondering what the legacy of the century might be. And he often, it, mostly he was talking about his experience in the Holocaust and as the speech is called, the perils of indifference. He says that in a way to be indifferent to suffering is what makes the human being inhumane. Uh, during the Holocaust, the indifference of many world leaders was heartbreaking to the Jews. And he decided that what he could do after was spread the tragic stories of those who survived and who didn't survive, but who went through this horrific event in history. And so that we can all learn from the past and never repeat it and never again be indifferent to the suffering of others. Um, he had many, many attention grabbers in his, in his speech, mostly... I would say his uh, his words, you know, his speaking was what came across the most. He didn't need grand hand gestures. He didn't need um, to be yelling. He didn't even need to smile or anything to grab our attention. All we had to do was listen to him as he spoke with a serious tone of how perilous indifference to people suffering can be. Um, one particular line he said is, some of us felt, some of us being the people in concentration camps, some of us felt that to be abandoned by humanity then was not the ultimate. We felt that to be abandoned by God was worse. That to be punished by him would be better. That to be punished by him, better an unjust God than an indifferent one. For us to be ignored by God was a harsher punishment than to be a victim of his anger. Men can live far from God, not outside of God. God is wherever we are, even in suffering even in suffering. So he does that. Um, every once in a while he repeats a certain line, like he said there, even in suffering, even in suffering, to really, really point out what he's trying to say. So, you know, he's trying to say, God is there even in suffering. So he's all around. He, And though they felt his indifference towards them, they would have rather had punishment. Um, so he uses limited hand gestures during a speech um, and he had his speech in front of him, so it wasn't ad-libbed, but that didn't even matter because he needed to say the exact words that he had written down because they were so important. One great thing he does is he gets his point across beautifully. He tells us what it was like when he was first free. Um, in the beginning of his speech, he says he was finally... Um, he also spoke about himself often in third person um, so that we could get the experience of a kid. Like, he was representing everybody when they were freed. So he says he was finally free, but there was no joy in his heart. He thought there never would be again. And when he saw the American soldiers that freed them, though he didn't understand their language, their eyes told him what he needed to know. So right there, we feel that suffering. We feel that humanity and we can feel how, how horrible it must have been that to think that nobody cared and then all of a sudden there were these soldiers and you don't recognize them, you don't know them, you don't know their country, their language, but you see them, you see their eyes, you see their humanity and you feel it in your heart. Uh, his main points, his main point I think he brought up was when he asked, what is indifference? And then he gives the definition and he names the many past uh, tragedies of the last century because they were giving um, sort of a remembrance of the past tragedies of the last century. And so he asks what the last century's legacy is going to be. And because that's the whole point of it being at this, um, the White House at this time. So he reminds us of that. And he also does add a counterpoint when he says that indifference can be tempting. More than that, sedu seductive. So he lets us know that he's not sitting here judging us for being indifferent. He knows that it's easy. He knows that it's what we're drawn to. Um... But then he says, your indifference gives others' lives no meaning. And that hits hard. <laughs> that hits hard. Um, so when he says lines like, in a way to be indifferent to that suffering is what makes a human being inhumane. Or indifference, after all, is, the most, is more dangerous than anger or hatred because it is an end. He doesn't 
he doesn't even do this, he doesn't do this, he doesn't do anything with his hands because what he's saying is all that matters. He doesn't need to put on a show for us. Um, oh, the one, one point he says is when he brings, he brings it back to saying that the only, the only solid truth that they had when they were in the concentration camps was that they must be secret, they must be secret from the world. They thought that the leaders of the free world did not know what was going on behind these black gates and barbed wire. Because if they had known, they would never let this happen. And that is what is what helped get him and others through the horrible things. Um, however, he does he does use his hands and his arms at the most passionate points in his speech, you can tell. And his voice changes when he says things. Like he says, when he talks about how indifference is, is worse than hate or anger, he says indifference is an end. And his voice changes in a way that you know that he is beyond serious. He says it is, a, it is a punishment. He says the killers, the victims, the bystanders. They, their indif indifference to them is, you know, what is worse, to be the killer, to be the victim, or the bystander who just watches all this happen? Um, there's points when he gives um, past tragedy, like examples again. Um, it's at 1659, he says that, um, because his voice and his words are what is important, so he doesn't even he doesn't use his hands very much. Um, oh yeah, and more m moments of passion when he's talking about um, the railways. Um, he really uses his voice. Um, he says indifference is more dangerous than hate and anger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he said okay, so. After expression, how they hoped that no one at the camps would know so that it'd be better that they were just, that they didn't know, rather than just completely ignoring it. And he says that he, they were hoping that at least the railways, just the railways, just once. And he uses his fists and he, he raises his voice and you know at this point he is remembering everything. And he remembers those railways just bringing more prisoners in and he just, he still can't comprehend that. Everyone was so indifferent to that. And he says, just the railways, just once they could have at least bombed them and stopped people from coming. And he says that he says all of this with anguish and pain. And you can truly, truly feel the anguish and pain. Um, if you ever get, if you ever happen to get bored while listening to this, which I don't know how you can because it's such a serious subject. Or if you, I don't know, you're wandering off, um... There are some points where he does bring you back in with his passion. Um, 1437, he says, was sent back. I don't understand. He His voice increases and his gestures are, are bigger. And you know what those parts, what he's saying is is beyond meaningful. It's um, It devastates you to hear these parts. Um, he does something creative where at the beginning when he talks about his freedom, he says, that young boy. And he brings it again to the end. And he says that young boy um, went through the worst thing a human being can go through. Um, so we just, it sort of, again, brings it back to him representing everybody that suffered. And it's a really beautiful way to open it and to end it. Um, to talk about himself so we remember he was there. and That it was actual humans that went through this. And the indifference of people was absolutely terrible. So, Ellie Wassell, counter to that um, article we read, he doesn't really use a lot of hand gestures, he doesn't really smile, he doesn't ad-lib his speech. And that's okay because this is one of the speeches where you don't need the grand gestures, you don't need to smile because of the subject, and you don't need to uh, ad-lib when you what you're having to say is so important that you need to read it precisely. Um, so this is absolutely a beautiful, devastating speech. There's so many takeaway points, and... Um, he ends it with the words um, that define how we all feel at the end of his profound speech. He says, he went through life, um, he goes through life still, carried by profound fear and extraordinary hope. So that's a great way to end a speech with beautiful words like that. And all in all, he, he does a beautiful job with his speech and reminds us absolutely to never be indifferent. And he leaves us with such an important message and also a devastating feeling that this ever happened and so that it will never happen again in this world. Thank you.